um we'll wait for uh, another minute and then we'll start as soon as uh, uh some of you join us All right. I guess um, we should start now. Uh, it's seven two, and we are here today to uh, discuss about what Google Summer of Code is, and we're going to be talking with two of the most talented people at RAI. And uh, these two have uh, have accomplished so much in their lives, and. We were, we would be trying to explore their journey of how they became a good developer, how they went on to contribute to open source, and how they ended up applying for this particular program called Google Summer of Code. So, I mean, before we begin, I just uh, uh I mean, I'd just like to introduce to you uh Neil Agarwal and uh, Somesh Kohli. So. If you guys could just give a brief introduction about yourselves, uh, uh, it would be great. So, Somesh, can you start? Uh, yeah. So, hi guys. Uh, I'm Somesh Kodi, and uh, I'm a B student from Mumbai University. So, basically, you know, for past three months, I was working with Postman, uh, Postman Lab. So, for under Google Summer of Code. So, basically, uh, uh, that's it. Uh, I guess about myself and. Uh, Let's go on to Neil's and we'll catch up later. All right. So, Neil. Sure. So, hi guys. I'm Neil Agarwal. I'm like in BE2 and I'm in Somesh's class as well. So, I've been like developing for around five to six years now. I My journey actually started with open source. I started like making this ROM called Halogen OS and slowly like we shifted towards web development i started writing javascript and typescript and then uh, like i made some couple of products called synthesize which basically helped you get mentors for your hackathon projects and like score funding uh, basically so that got selected as um, a mentor project for the reels girls summer of code last year after that uh, worked on the product called uh, Perfest, which is like an event management portal for like tech events. Somesh Kohli, my Somesh did the back end and like I was uh, the front end guy. After that, uh, this year I like uh, began a new journey with Headout. Um, Headout is a travel tech company where uh, we mainly focus on uh, ticket bookings like say Broadway shows in NYC, um, say Barcelona tickets, anything like that. Uh, so I'm currently working as the front end engineer over there. I'm working on the web and the app. Um, and now like last month or so, like we started doing GSOC, both of us. And um, I completed my GSOC with uh, Rocket Chat, which was sponsored by Credit Suisse, which is a Swiss bank. So that, and uh, also I'm working with a couple of friends on this uh, cool product studio called Zero Dev. So we build products for ourselves and we work with a couple of cool people like Geoglass and like say, some other clients. So yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Neil. Um, yeah. So, uh, could you do like just elaborate on what Google Summer of Code is? Uh, because I mean, a lot of people are uh, curious about what this uh, 
uh, program is about. So uh, if you guys could just elaborate on that, Neil, if you start. Okay, so Google Summer of Code is a internship program started by Google where um, there Google actually contacts a number of open source organizations, say uh, anything like GNOME, KDE, you have Mozilla, you have Rocket Chat, you have Postman, you have a lot of other organizations as well. So what they do is uh, these open source organizations need a lot of um, the work done on the open source projects that they have built. Mm. And uh, as a part of the program, they select students who are capable of solving these uh, problems and building products. And uh, basically, they give them the stipend and you can like intern with these organizations and you will be contributing to the open source repositories of these organizations. And slowly, it will help you learn and it will help you discover new technologies and actually you will be involved in an open source community for a long period of time, say three four, to four months. I guess even longer, say six months because you'll have to like start um, making your um, project proposals then you will have to browse around different organizations so yeah that kind of summarizes what gsoc is there's a lot more to it but we'll get to it eventually yeah yeah of course um so i'll just like to know that i mean uh, google summer of code mostly focuses on uh, open source projects and I just want to know from you guys what your take uh, is uh, about Google Summer of Code uh, and like in open, of open source in general. So, I mean, what, what all, what is your perspective and like why should we uh, go on to contribute to open source and why do you contribute to open source uh, uh, basically in general? So, uh, about this, so basically, uh... In my view, open source is something uh, we do for the community. For, so basically, uh, let's say uh, you have like something that you want to show or uh, you want to uh, display it to people. So basically, you build something, you show it to people, you publish it somewhere so that people can, people can use it and try it out and so that you can uh, get feedbacks on it and eventually your project gets uh, recognition. So. Uh, most of the open source project, I guess, started this way in uh, like with the aim of like uh, contributing to the community and helping other people out for the development process or something like that. So uh, that's it. And I guess uh, from my side, I do these things because uh, like for fun purpose mostly. So basically, maybe some weekend project or something like that. Most of the most of the time, so we go for hackathons like. Uh, me and Neil have gone for more than uh, 15 to 20 hackathons. So all of those projects are open source under Devfolio or some some or other organization. So basically, what we do is we build product, we demo it, we try to show it to the people that we have built something, and yeah, something like that. All right. What about you, Neil? So open source has been very close to my heart. I began my journey into development with open source. I have like never worked in a closed source organization until now. Um, just started recently, but that's a tech company. So yeah. So like I started contributing in 2015. So we made a ROM called Halogen OS, which got around the lakh users and uh, mainly the traffic came from um, countries like India and Germany and most parts of Europe. So that actually helped me get into the open source community and like make new friends and like learn from a lot of better developers that are around there. I truly believe that open source helps you build better products and it has a sense of a community building aspect to it. Um, I really work, I really love working with the open source technologies and like, truly like, yeah, that's it. Like, 
Uh, so basically, like what I've seen um, in my years of contributing to open source and uh, like wanting to be a part of uh, Google Summer of Code as well for the past, I think, three years. I mean, whenever you go through the organizations and like the repositories of these organizations, it's quite intimidating to sort of um, uh, find issues and contribute your uh, piece of code to it. And uh, I mean, we just wanted to know that like, what what uh, should we do in order to get to that level where we can easily navigate through these repositories and easily contribute to the code? So, like, we just wanted to know like what what you all did, uh, what you two did, uh, in order to uh, get to that level, in order to be a good developer, a good programmer. So, just uh, some sort of a light on your journey uh, that brought you to this point. Uh, so, Mesh, you can start. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, that's true that when we go through uh, big projects like, uh, let's say, GNOME or KDE or something like that, we get uh, a bit nervous after seeing the code base of, of those projects. So they have a huge code base that are uh, they have been building for years, like 10 years or so. So uh, uh, we can't just jump into code bases right from the beginning. So since uh, about myself, uh, since I've been being a developer for three to four years now, so uh, I have that some sort of experience how the codes are maintained and how things are done in this environment. So I have that idea and a similar uh, also my other developer mates also have some kind of idea how the project works. So that is important and about how to get started. And so basically every organization have their like uh, developer guide or something like that. Uh, these organizations love developers and incoming uh, love to like merge the PRs that they receive. So basically it is for the community. So they encourage them to participate in this stuff. So all of them have a specific set of like rules or guidance, something like that, which in which they help the incoming developers to like get started with the project. That is so, quite correct. Uh, what about you, Neil? I guess first of all, pick a community that you like something that you actually use and start contributing like it's very easy to get started like just go to their github browse for some issues create an issue if you find some bug and there are a lot of new initiatives by github as well like new first issue good first issue and all that mm -hmm. so it's very easy to get started then you can like join their discord servers or telegram groups or whatever they have a lot of these things to get involved with the community after that uh, you gotta have like some knowledge about what their stack is i mean i mean the tech stack and uh, you gotta have some knowledge about the language that they use and if you don't you can like uh, learn it on your own it's not very difficult to learn a language like in like say a month or something you won't even require a month i guess you can do it in a week or so so basically do that um, to get into a community and uh, I would also suggest starting your own small projects like me and Somesh did. We attended a lot of hackathons which helped us um, build up our portfolios as well as um, get started with contributing to the open source communities. Uh, we made a lot of friends. We got into this amazing community called Devfolio which uh, helped um, boost hackathons further and um, yeah, it's very easy to get started, I guess, and everyone should be able to do it on their own too. All right. So, I mean, GSOC, uh, so Google Summer of Code has this timeline where initially you have to get started in order to be, uh, in order to get started with a organization, you need to start contributing to it. And then you need to sort of formulate an idea of uh, what kind of project or what kind of proposal you would be uh, working on throughout the uh, course of your internship uh, as a part of Google Summer of Code. So, uh, like, could you uh, give, uh, like, throw, uh, throw some light on how you did that for your own project or, like, uh, what your organization was and, like, uh, how you sort of shortlisted it and then, you know, how you went on to uh, draft a proposal for that particular organization and whatever project that they uh, proposed or like what you proposed um, uh, to work on uh, during the course of the internship. So, so Mesh, you can uh, go first. 
yeah so basically uh, what i have i how i got started was uh, basically when the pandemic hit this year so uh, we were like home shack from 15th of march or something so yeah that was the point that i realized that i had nothing to do i was completely uh, jobless or something like that <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, and i just saw a post on linkedin that uh, postman was being part of google or some or google some code this year and i've been using postman for past 3 years i guess and been using its tools like newman and code generators and postman runners in my like development cycle uh, majorly so like i just uh, went to their uh, data van so I just started picking around their code bases checking for bugs trying to fix their uh, existing bugs and made some very bad prs at the beginning <laughs> so yeah that's uh, that's very uh, natural that uh, you don't get a perfect pr on your first trial on some organization because you don't have uh, much idea about it so that's the way you get started so basically uh, you put a pr the developers help you uh, recognize your faults and what you have done wrong and after that uh, uh, like after you uh, try to do it in a right way so that's how i got started regarding the proposal so in my opinion uh, while framing a proposal one thing you should keep in mind that uh, idea is everything so basically every organization is looking for a good idea and a good feature that has to be involved uh, implemented in the software so that is something very important while writing a proposal so in my proposal i added a few i didn't add a few feature but uh, i proposed a new project is itself which uh, aimed at increasing the developer like uh, usability something like that so yeah so that was how i got started all right just one question uh, could you yeah. elaborate more about uh, what postman is like what the organization is about i mean we all know that we use it for yeah. testing apis but i mean uh, if you can elaborate a bit about that so uh, regarding a bit background about postman so postman started with a small extension in chrome in back in 2012 by a guy in bits pilani so uh, it made a extension and it got very famous among the developer community so basically we already have this command called curl by which we can test our apis and send request and uh, check the responses so that was not so flexible so what he did was he created an extension with some sort of ui which uh like help the developers to properly frame the request and check the response back so after that postman uh grew and uh, it started as a startup company the same uh start it as a startup company and since last 3 years it has been in so much like recognition that i guess almost every every developer uh, who work on backend technologies knows about it so basically it helps you test your apis it create help you create mock apis and other stuff that will help uh, developers to like uh, increase productivity and something like that right uh, about you nail like what was uh, your experience uh, choosing your project and drafting your proposal choosing organization and stuff so like i knew that i'm going to do something this year and it's going to be probably front end because i'm i'm not very like much interested in the back end i don't hate back end i'm just more interested in the front end that's the thing so so yeah so i mainly developed with react and react native um so my first goal was to find an organization that uses react native or react and um, I actually wanted to explore more about React Native, the native side of React Native, how it has a bridge. So basically, uh, for some context, React is a library for making web apps, um, which is by Google, and React Native is a framework for building cross-platform mobile apps. Um, it is also by Google, and uh, you can basically build Android, iOS, Windows, and other mac os applications you can also use react native web which is you can basically have one code base something like flutter but by facebook so yeah that and um, wanted to find something that um, has react native basically so thought listed a couple of organizations and like i was browsing around i found found some but one that like actually 
had my interest in particular was rocket chart so rocket chart is um, basically an enterprise chart application suite which is provided um, by this company called rocket chart itself um, they are based out of nyc and they are like their offices in brazil too so um, they are being used by big companies like intel uh, canonical which is uh, the maker of the famous linux distribution ubuntu then they are being used by samsung they are being used by nvidia i guess they are like big names so yeah i wanted to work at something some app that actually scaled huge so shortlisted rocket chart and um, started contributing around um, end of jan i guess we i guess mid jan yeah so like as browsing around issues and like pull requests at the rocket chart at native uh, github and it's all open source so you can um, look at my prs you can look at my issues can have a look at my work that i did during the period so i basically the project that i um, there were um, there were around uh, i guess 15 to 16 different projects that rocket chart had you could uh, select your own project as well or you could select something from the list of the projects that they have given so i selected this project called audio improvements on rocket chart so that basically meant i'll have to like do some um, some ui like where whatsapp or telegram has while recording and sending audio to other chat uh, group chats or uh, individual chats so that was being done i um, made a small pr with the initial set of features in cap itself uh, i guess that helped me grab some attention from my mentors and from the organization uh, started contributing they also had um, this leaderboard called gsoc.rocket.chat where um, it provided you with a view of um, the all the participants that are contributing to the rocket chat organization and uh, now it would be easier for the mentors to like browse who is active or who is not and then they would like look at it and stuff like that so um we even had a chance to like um, have a one on one chat with uh, gabriel lengel which is uh, the ceo of rocket chat um, the top 10 contributors in the gsoc um, leaderboard um that was there and uh, slowly i started drafting my proposal around uh, feb end i guess yeah and uh, we had to like um, give them to the mentors the proposal was like reviewed a lot of time by our mentors and then uh, back and forth and uh, they suggested some changes and um, in the features in the product i mean the project itself and that's how like it was done um then one interesting thing called uh, this year rocket chart didn't receive a lot of slots um every year rocket chart receives around 17 to 18 slots but this year it only got seven so um there were a lot of good proposals um, that they received but they couldn't select all of them so um uh, uh, what they did was they found sponsors for these good projects mine was one of them i didn't actually get selected by google itself um, because rocket chart didn't have enough slots this year so uh, my project sponsor was this swiss bank very big uh, firm called credit suisse you might have heard about it so i was in contact with a mentor from credit suisse as well while doing my project and uh, it was fun working with them as well all right all right very impressive um uh, so uh, wait, is there a like just mute your um, video if you are playing it anyway um so i mean definitely that is uh, quite impressive and uh, it, it was great knowing what you did uh, uh, like your throughout the duration of uh, uh, your internship um also for those of you who don't have much experience uh, contributing through github uh to open source repositories or in general a pr is basically a pull request where you um 
like send whatever uh, uh, snippets of your code uh, whichever uh, snippets of your code you want to change in the actual code base so that uh, they get reviewed by men by the mentors of the uh, of that particular organization and uh, they uh, like they, then they sort of approve it and then merge it with the uh, the uh, the actual code base so i mean these might be a little bit uh, some of the jargons uh, that you might not uh, be familiar with but uh, we'll i mean we'll be having uh, certain sessions in the future where we'll dive deep into uh, the basics of github where you, where you'll be able to learn about uh, how to contribute to open source as well uh, now coming to uh, somesh so like uh, as neil gave a quite brief a uh, description of what his work and what his role was at uh, rocket chat uh, his organization uh, we just wanted to know like what you did as a part of your internship at postman so i mean you can just elaborate on that a bit yeah so basically uh, from my side actually postman has a very excellent uh, very good picture of called uh, code generator so basically what it does is uh, you make a request using their interface and it creates a so uh, snippet code for the request in multiple languages like java python golang and uh, node.js and there are uh, like 12 or 13 of them and in that too they provide an option to like uh, choose the library that has to be used so basically every app, uh, language has their own library for http or something like that so basically it is a code generation thing that creates code snippets for http request so what i did was uh, i proposed them to like generate a client sdk so basically you can create an entire sdk for an endpoint api endpoint so basically you can just inject that in your code base and get started with the api usage so you might have come across many apis that do that don't have a proper sdk so you have to actually make like, a http request by yourself by calling some using some http uh, like client or something like that so what i did was i uh, combined a repository called their code generators and uh, one of their uh, core foundation of postman that is postman collections so i combined them and uh, created a sdk generator which generates an entire sdk for your postman collection that you build and test on postman app all right all right um okay uh, so i mean we do know about these organizations that you work for like uh, rocket chat and postman so i mean uh, somesh you've already given some sort of a, a, a sense into what postman is but uh, i mean we we'll, we just want to know a bit more about what rocket chat does and uh, a bit more about the organization uh, and uh, like what it does in general so uh everyone might have heard about slack over here right it's like a group chat app that is being used by most of the startups most of the big firms too so rocket chat is like that but it is open source and it gives you a lot of freedom with whatever you want to put into it uh, you can basically build a lot of stuff that you need uh, build something that you know uh, remove something that you don't need uh, it's like mostly an enterprise chat application but it also has like omni channel features like um, they have a lot of integrations with different uh, chat apps like whatsapp and stuff so that is there they have their alexa integration they have a lot going on around nowadays so all right yeah. all right so um uh, like i mean uh, Uh, we've uh, heard about all your experience, uh, like while working for uh, these organizations, as well as uh, how to, how you contributed to these organizations as well. Uh, but if you have some sort of a, some sort of tips uh, to people uh, who have just started contributing to open source or who aspire to be a part of uh, Google Summer of Code, uh, do you have any uh, sort of tips for those? Uh, uh i mean something that you kept in mind while you were contributing or while you were working uh, on these uh, particular applications um anything that uh, you might want to share with us uh, so may she can start uh yeah so uh, when i got started uh, i didn't actually 
expected to like get selected for GSOC or something like that because uh, other people were working from January and February for the organizations and, and I was like just 10 days uh, away from my submission. So I didn't really expect to get selected here. I just uh, like was having fun and uh, like uh, I was enjoying working with the repository and talking with them. So yeah, that was it. And uh, if you wish to like aim for it, I, then I guess uh, if you have a strong uh, thing that you have to get selected in it and you want to like be a part of that community or something like that, then I guess uh, you have to uh, uh, like uh, build a strong bonding with the uh, developer side and be a regular uh, contributor to that organization, something like that. All right. Yeah, I mean, that is definitely an advice that I'm following right now. Uh, <laughs> and I hope to sort of continue with that till the time uh, Google Summer of Code comes as well. Um, what about you, Neil? Any tip for people mm -hmm. like us? Kind of the same for me. I started contributing kind of late, not very early. People had been contributing starting December and November, but I started mid-Jan and mid-Feb, I guess. Yeah, mid-Feb. So being active in the Rocket Chat group on Rocket Chat was like important. Like you can't not be active in a community and expect to get selected, first of all. Mm -hmm. That is one of the great things that could uh, increase your chances. I guess... Uh, a lot of other things also come into factoration uh, factors like uh, your proposal needs to be very good. Uh, you can't just beat around the bush and write the same thing again and again. Um, we'll be hosting a session on that also in uh, Jan, I guess we have planned um, it on our roadmap. Mm -hmm. uh, that you need to have previous open source contributions, which are very, very important. You can't go there with like zero contributions, you can't go there with zero repository on your personal GitHub. So that is one of the most important things because you need to have a portfolio for them to see, right? Uh, yeah. They're not going to just take out your proposal and select you as a he, like you need some background as well. You also need to have a proper reason of selecting this organization in particular because there are like around 50 to hundreds of organizations and they are also looking for the reason of why you choosing them. So that is an important thing you would write in your proposal. Um, apart from these, uh, I guess you need to be really active in the community and chat with the mentors and yeah, you need to get a lot of feedback from all the mentors that are allotted to your project. If you just have your proposal first of all, and then you send it over, uh, that is not going to work. You have to like have like chats and calls with your mentors and basically dig their brains to get your proposal perfect. And uh, yeah, that will also help you to learn how you build a proposal, how you write. One of the most important things I learned during this was uh, writing, I guess that is very important that you need to know yeah. uh, without writing i don't think you will be able to do much in life <laughs> so that is one of the most important skills that you will require and i'd suggest starting now uh, start having blogs if you can if you do that that is good uh, start blogging yeah uh, be active on linkedin on github that will help you too uh, Apart from that, uh, there's no, I don't think there's much to say, but there are a lot of small tips here and there, like we'll be taking a session on that soon in Jan when there is, uh, when the GSOC session starts in there, uh, this year's, I mean, the next year's dates arrive. Right. Yeah, I mean, as you rightly pointed out, uh, even a part of DSC RAIT, we will be fostering uh, an environment where people would be able to contribute open source projects 
and uh, like all our all our projects would be open source it will uh, like we'll be tracking all the contributions through a leaderboard just like rocket chat does and like we working on that tool as well so i mean in case you're interested in uh, helping us out um, uh, in order to build that uh, tool and build our website or anything of that sort uh, you can help us out you can join us on discord and we can collaborate together and it will be all open source uh, you will be able to see every uh, thing that we're trying to do here and uh, the contributions from each and every member uh, that we have and even outside so um now uh, coming to the towards the end of this session um i mean if you guys have any questions uh, uh like which you want to ask uh, to somesh and anil uh, you can do so uh, by writing them in the chat box and we'll be reading them one by one and like solving all your doubts so any questions uh, i think there is one question here uh, by hari darshan uh, how did you uh, come to know about what hackathons are going on uh, so i mean yeah that is definitely a valid question and uh, i hope that neel and somesh would do justice to it so uh, over to you guys yeah so basically uh, like uh, from the beginning we have been part of hackathon community so there are many communities that host hackathons and promote hackathons also there are hackathons that are built held in colleges like some of them uh, some of the communities are mls and that is majorly hackathon so it hosts a bunch of hackathon all over the world so basically you can get stats over there or one of the favorite uh, my favorite is defolio because i have been part of it since i guess 2 uh, years now 2 2 2.5 years now so mm -hmm. yeah that is one of the best community that i have been found uh, and been a part of and uh, yeah that's great and also it's regarding folio website also yeah actually my photo was there on the defolio website also oh, <laughs> regarding nice. being part of uh, like the defolio community from the beginning yeah so all these things you can get uh, from being com connected to a community so community being a part of community is very important from all for all these things like you get uh, information about new hackathons new technologies new stuff that they are building that and you can also promote stuff that you are building for yourself and for the community so yeah yeah like a lot of hackathons i am not sure about now because because of the pandemic you can't travel and lot uh, but last year i guess we started Uh, we started with the first defolio hackathon right in 2019 the yeah. last one yeah yeah that it was, was it bombay i guess I yeah bombay. so that was the first hackathon that defolio organized over here in mumbai i guess um, we started we built it uh, built this uh, blockchain app called the dlands which is a decentralized freelance platform uh, we didn't win obviously because there were a lot of better people that we got to learn from so that um we then uh, had a lot of local hackathons there were a lot of hackathons in colleges around uh, kg somaya for example like a lot of other hackathons as well uh, yeah so we started building a lot of these uh, products and projects basically not products because we didn't like do anything after building them uh, so building projects is one of the most important things that you need to do and you know you should know how to do that except for competitive programming that's true um uh, then we like i went to this uh, hackathon called uh, uh, hack in the north which is uh, organized by triple it alabad that was a really good, good experience um, i met all i made a lot of friends over there and i actually you know what like we met them over there first and then we met them at an out uh, in bangalore and that was amazing like meeting someone at another hackathon and then meeting them again like while having lunch or something is the best thing <laughs> so we, we yeah. caught up and like we had a lot of long chats about what we want to do in the future what we want to do now and stuff so that like hackathons are like the favorite thing that i love to go to uh there are a lot of on online hackathons that have been um, organized i guess uh, you could take part in them 
go to devfolio go to hacker rank go to hacker earth you could like join mlh to major league hacking they have a lot of events going around all right uh so there's one question i think it's for you neil um what are some sources of learning react other than youtube uh care to elaborate on that like where did you learn react and react native build projects man that's the only thing i i have been saying this for 2 years now that's the only thing that helped me <laughs> start by building and not by learning um i i i about my journey how i started web development so i was more into android and android platform back in the days but i got a couple of freelance projects so i needed to like get into hardcore web development i began with a progressive web app uh, framework called view view was like a very easy to learn and stuff i actually i learned um, by this uh, youtuber called maximilian schwarzmuller if i'm pronouncing his name right yeah it's right yeah 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 it's right yeah, he, he's very very famous and yeah. a lot great courses by him you could uh, check that out he has courses on react and every i guess i guess most of the mm-hmm. javascript frameworks available so that i learned view and then um, i didn't have to take a course to learn react because i got my fundamentals cleared from my view um, understanding then uh, i guess i um, built perfect and got acquainted with react properly we use typescript we use react native web uh, used a lot of other tools like redux offline also so we needed to build an offline experience so that's like a lot to learn um react you can like basically build a couple of to do apps and like you will get a basic understanding it's not very tough uh, easy i guess all right uh yeah i mean that that is definitely uh, very useful also i just like to add that i, I mean uh, also try to go through the documentation of these frameworks is well. like they they are very well uh, like they are, they are very well uh, like uh detailed and um elaborate and they also have a lot of tutorials on the uh, site uh, for you to get started e- other react website also has like uh, this game give it where you can just get started with the whole thing so i think uh, you should go to that um, uh, to the to uh, read the uh, react documentation as well as same for react native as well uh, a bit different uh, they are they are both of them are a bit different so um yeah so uh, the next question is um uh, how were the evaluations and mentors at gsoc uh, what if somebody fails to deliver on the proposed idea so yeah that definitely is a good question and uh, i mean we definitely want to know uh, what are the consequences of not delivering on time uh yeah so uh, in my experience like i have been working with uh, around 50 to 60 these are participants this year so i don't think any of them who have worked uh, continuously have failed so basically the only point of failure in gsoc is if you stop communicating community uh, communicating with your mentors mm-hmm. so i guess that's very important part so communication in gsoc is very important so you have to constantly communicate with some uh, someone or other in the community so that uh, you get to know what's going on and what you are doing and tell them that how what your updates are so basically once you stop doing that the mentors basically the mentors will be blind about your progress and he won't know that what you are doing so yeah i guess that's the only point of failure if uh, you do on do that i guess then you will definitely fail in so this so. other than that i don't think there's anything uh, the thing is communication and if you don't do that it's not going to be possible to complete the project if you yes. are not available let them know in advance you can't go and say ki i am not going to be able to do this because they you got to tell them ki you're not available on this this time and they'll understand they are not very strict also they do understand if there's some problem so like i had my laptop uh, servicing done in mid gsoc and that was kind of hectic for me but yeah it works out in the end all right yeah that is definitely great advice uh, and we hope to follow that as well 
Um, okay, so this is a question from a second year EXTC student. What pre prerequisite knowledge and skills uh, are required to get started to be a part of GSOC? Uh, so yeah, I mean, what, what are the uh, basic skills that one should have before, you know, getting started uh, with the contributions uh, to open source? Uh, so basically you need a keyboard and a mouse, <laughs> not more than that, I guess. And also a uh, knowledge of Git and GitHub. I think yeah. that yeah, is that, also very that important. You will learn eventually. Yeah. Basically, uh, you just need a way to learn what you have, you want to do. So that's everything that you need. I, I don't think any specific set of rules and specific set of skills are needed mm -hmm. to get into these things. Perfectly said. <laughs> um okay uh so i mean i think this question is for you neil because i mean i think you answered uh for the react thing that do you do the do projects build projects so uh someone is asking what projects uh do you suggest for beginners um anything in your mind i mean which you uh like when you were getting started like what were the kind of projects that you worked on so i guess the first I'll answer about React Native because the first React Native app I built was this thing called Hello, which basically helps you add contacts, mass contacts, batch contacts to your contacts app on your Android phone. And then you can like add them to your WhatsApp group for tough, I'd say. So like I needed that last year for adding people to groups and I built that. So. I don't think I've ever built something that I wouldn't technically use. Uh, a recent project of mine uh, is called Tracklist, which like I listen to a lot of music on YouTube and like uh, a lot of DJ sets or techno sets. So you Tracklist basically gets you the tracklist of the particular set you're listening to and gives you the Spotify links to that. So that like figure out what you would like to have and build that basically. Like you could begin begin with a to-do app that's very simple to build and then you can progress towards other complex all right uh okay so gaurav is asking uh how to find open source repositories that meet your interests and corresponds with your skills yeah so uh, regarding this so basically it's up to your interest so basically Let's say uh, you are interested in some uh, technology like uh, uh, how Neil found that out was he was uh, he used to use a uh, rocket chat if I'm not wrong. That's true, that's true. Yeah, so he got to know about rocket chat by using that product. So similarly, I got to know about uh, Postman uh, because I was using Postman for past three to four, uh, four years. Yeah, so basically, that's uh, how you got uh, get to know about uh, organizations and repositories. So you use their product, you know there exists something like this which would help you, which would help the community. And you want to know more about that project, how the, it's working and how it is being built. Yeah, something like that. Um, also, like, I mean, if you want to, uh, like, uh, surf through the organizations that participate in Google Summer of Code. Uh, there is a whole uh, like list of the past organizations, and they also provide uh, like there and there, uh, you know, uh, like what frameworks and uh, programming languages or whatever things that they are working with. Uh, and like if, if that's something that you're looking for, I mean, you can definitely go to their site and uh, sort of explore what kind of uh, organizations interest you and. Definitely, once you get to know about them, try to use their products before uh, contributing to them. I think that would be a much uh, like uh, that will be a much better way to get uh, get started with contribution. Um, okay, uh, Aditya is asking, uh, when did you start coding? The four first year or not? And what skills do you need to start contributing to open source? Initially, I am unable to understand a thing. A single thing on open source repositories from my side i've like told my story i'd like to listen to so many shows. yeah yeah so uh one uh started in like uh actually programming like building real world application i guess i started in first year 
so before that i used to tweak around here and there and uh, that was they, uh, they were not so useful for everyone so and about a question like how to get started with the repository and how tough they are so yeah that is natural how uh, that you feel nervous by seeing the repository so basically the developers are have been building that since the uh, 10 years or 20 years some of them are uh, like from 50 years to that, such as art times or something like that so you can't just get a glimpse of those things at first sight so uh, getting uh, like negative effect is quite natural but once you start using them and once you start like uh, tinkering about uh, around them so then you get used to it and you get to know how things are working how different components of the project are being integrated into one another and other things uh, so Aryan here is asking uh, how did you manage uh, learning all these things alongside academics so I mean you guys are in both here right now um, and I think would by by this time you would be uh, quite the expert in uh, like managing both of these things uh, side by side so like could you sort of like elaborate on that as well I'll take that up so <laughs> apart from academics I am working with Head Out. I'm starting this firm called Zulu Devs. I'm doing a lot of stuff. There's also GSOC going on. <laughs> then, like, after GSOC, I joined DSC. Uh, so, you gotta learn to manage time. It's not gonna be anything, can't be possible. Stop watching Netflix, first thing. <laughs> true. Very Watch true. Netflix. Like, in limited quantities yeah. like don't do it for six hours if you can uh, good thing pubg is banned you won't be able to play it you might but no indian server thing will be high so that's there don't play a lot of games start learning to do multiple things at the same time there's like a lot of other time management things that you can do there's time boxing and like Stuff like that, which you can learn on YouTube. Like you basically box your time in particular intervals, set it on your calendar, and then focus on working. There's this amazing app called Clockwise, which you can um, use for meetings and all that stuff. So when you want to schedule meetings and when you want your focus time and stuff, we use that it head out a lot. Um, right. That I guess academics, you will have to like learn to balance it uh, i wouldn't be answering that uh, <laughs> because i am not very good with academics i am getting a decent enough pointer and i'm happy with what i do basically so that anything you would like to add so uh, no i guess neil is quite exported in this thing <laughs> <laughs> and he has said everything that was required <laughs> I don't have anything to say about it. Right. <laughs> we all are in the same cloud. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so um, like uh, so basically, there's this uh, uh so Biswa Deep is uh, asking um, uh, how when did when do you when did when did you start your coding journey? Uh, did you master full data structures and algorithms? Uh, I mean. The first is like something that you've already explained, but like, did you master data structures and algorithms before, you know, diving deep into the different frameworks? I think not, but still from you guys. Uh, actually, uh, uh, you never master something, in my opinion. So it's a progressive thing and you do, uh, you grow as you get experience in it. So before starting with all those, all these things, I didn't actually focus on it's a DS and something like that. So I just started building things and other things came along. Like uh, if I wanted to increase efficiency of something, then I had to look into something uh, that is uh, related to that, but not specifically. I didn't uh, do anything specific before starting it. So I'll give you like a real world example of this thing. So I was building tracklist as I told earlier and uh, there I got a JSON request of a lot of tracks. I passed some website and got a JSON request of a massive JSON file of the tracks that are played in the set. And 
I needed to like sort them according to the timestamps and stuff. So I did the normal naive approach and that wasn't working out. It basically took a lot of time to calculate that. So came to Somesh for help and like uh, he suggested that I use a binary sorting thing. He helped me with that and like DS and Algo really helps a lot. Uh, you have to do that for interviews. You There's no escape for that. For uh, fan companies, you will obviously need, you can't get into like Facebook, Amazon, Google, Netflix and stuff like that without mm. data structures and algorithms. As a developer, it is your job to know about all these things. You can't escape them, but I don't think everyone will be able, I, I don't think anyone will be able to master them. Like, you are still learning. I'm like, it's not possible to be a master or something, I guess. So many sure that I right. this. Right. Uh, so I um, Gaurav is asking uh, like uh, so since you guys have hi highlighted the fact that communication is really important uh, as a part of JSOC and basically any uh, community in general. Um, how do you ensure that you know you're communicating efficiently with your mentors, with your peers, and getting regular feedback and stuff? So I mean, could you just elaborate a bit on that? So from my side, um, my mentors were from Brazil and I am from India. So we were in different time zones. So that was one of the new challenges that I faced. So like it was kind of easy for me because I don't sleep early. I sleep at around 4 to 5 a.m. And uh, it's like around 4 to 5 p.m. out there. So I was able to communicate everything with my mentors and we were able to go through pull requests and stuff. Um, every week there was this thing called uh, the weekly thing. So you got to put all your updates in a big paragraph uh, and you got to send it on m Monday. So that was there. And if you had any doubts, you really have to like tell your mentors you can't be stuck on a thing for a long time because that is the main thing that will waste your time. So that is where I was stuck at some places. And like, if I would have communicated that to my mentor, I would have like finished up a lot of stuff uh, earlier. So that is one thing I learned. So good. Yeah. Some from my side, I even I face this issue of time zones, and even my answer is same. I don't sleep at night. Uh, so. Basically, uh, every organization has some sort of uh, like track list or something like that. So uh, in, uh, with me, uh, I didn't have a proper communication channel. We used to communicate over mails. And this is quite normal when it comes to old organizations like uh, Dubai and something like that. They only communicate over like mailing list for all your things. So what they do is they maintain a, uh, something a Google Doc or something like that in a similar fashion where you push all your updates regularly and like quite keep an eye on them. And even if you uh, can't, uh, were you, you weren't able to do anything in some time frame, you just push uh, the reason that uh, that was and they accept it. Like they don't uh, like blame you for something like that. So it's quite uh, casual over there. All right. OK. Um, also, I just like to thank uh, Somesh Shavasav. He's a uh, like he's a GSOC mentor, and he's been answering some of the questions on the live chat as well. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, and we definitely want to know a bit more about you as well. And um, uh, there are a couple more questions here, but I think I I mean it's uh, we we have one more minute. We can take up another question. So uh, Webhub is asking of. Uh, are job oriented frameworks or technologies trending right now? Um, Very broad question. Yeah. But uh, I think you can answer uh, with respect to your, uh, like, maybe web development or oh, while I developed. Uh, out, we're using Next.js. Currently, we were previously using React uh, with custom SSR written by us. Um, Next year sorted most of the problems that we had out. 
uh, React Native and Flutter are the go-to uh, frameworks for uh, uh, multi-platform app development. You also use native Kotlin a lot, and you use uh, uh, Swift for iOS. You also use Objective-C for iOS, but that's kind of not the thing nowadays you use Swift more. Uh, that's, I guess, it on the front end side. You use React and Vue has been like coming up uh, slowly. There's this new framework called Svelte that mm. we use for some projects um, um, in head out and that was interesting to work with. Very easy to begin with. I suggest you start with that if you aren't able to get a hold of React in the first day. So for backend, I guess Omish will be better to explain. Yeah, so uh, I don't work at proper organizations right now, but uh, working with Postman in the past four months. Postman's everything, most of them things are built on Node.js. So and other frameworks that is built on top of Node.js. So basically, the, uh, uh, the Postman app itself is built on Electron.js, and other web portals are built on top of React. So what Postman does is it picks up the open source of uh, like uh, projects uh, about these things and tweak it according to their requirements. So basically, uh, uh, one of the examples that I have at the top of my mind is a request library. It's basically a HTTP library that allows you, you to send HTTP requests. So Postman tweaked it and uh, made it feasible to use it in their environment with their objects and uh, with their uh things in that yeah so everything in postman is around node.js and other frameworks right that is definitely uh yeah those are the technologies that are trending at this moment i think um uh so basically i mean i think we have a few more questions but if we what i feel is uh maybe we can continue this on our discord server so there's a link to the discord server in the description you can check it out and if you have any further questions or if you want to interact directly with somesh or neil you can join us there and we'll be holding like a very uh, casual uh, informal session of sort um where you can ask your questions one on one and uh, you can join the daily events uh, uh, voice channel uh, to to for, to sort of ask your questions so basically, I mean, uh, this is pretty much it. Thank you so much uh, for you to uh, like give us your time. And uh, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys have so much work to do, but you still took out a lot of time to help us all out. And on that note, I just like to uh, say that, you know, even uh, like as a part of uh, the community, uh, 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 an open source contributor myself, I just like to say that, you know, uh, a lot of us go for unpaid internships and uh, do stuff uh, with, for companies uh, of, from which they can extract some sort of profits as well, uh, like from your uh, hours of labor. So what you can do instead is maybe just go to an open source uh, organization which doesn't really uh, monetize their products and uh, sells them, not sells them, like, but like uh, makes them available for free. So uh, these uh, sort of uh, products uh, are the kind of products that you should contribute your time to. And what I feel is instead of doing these unpaid internships, you can uh, go do something much better, something bigger than all of us and contribute the, uh, to the developer community in general. So uh, on that note, uh, I'd like to end uh, even as a part of ESC RAIT. We'll be hosting a lot of uh, open source projects where you can learn how to contribute to open source projects before going on to these organizations, this, these uh, big organizations with complicated open source repositories. So um, on that note, uh, I'd like to end this session. And thank you so much for, uh, for all of you to join. And um, uh, also just uh, give a thumbs up to this video if you liked it and enjoyed it and subscribe uh, I know I sound like a YouTuber but still I mean uh, that will mean a lot and uh, I hope to see you all in the next in the future sessions as well uh, we'll be having a, our getting started week from tomorrow where we'll be introducing you to github 
and uh, if you're curious about uh, contributing to open source do join that uh, it will be uh, streamed live on our uh, you, uh, on our uh, discord server so do join it and there's a link in the description for it uh, and it was really nice interacting with you guys and answering all your questions as well uh, thank you all um, i think we just mm -hmm. going to end now uh, just a sec Bye.